Hello everybody, my name is Agnes Janke, I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Silicon Carbide and Gallium Nitride at x Semiconductor Foundries. And today I will speak to you about the challenges and opportunities of manufacturing silicon carbide in a foundry. x is a foundry group for analog mixed signal semiconductor technologies. We have six manufacturing sites in Germany, France, Malaysia and the USA. All of them are automotive certified. Silicon carbide is processed so far only in Lubbock, Texas, in our 6-inch foundry. We have a combined capacity of around 100,000 8-inch wafer starts per month and employ about 3,800 employees worldwide. We are serving over 380 customers in our four key markets, automotive, industrial, consumer and with a growing number also medical. XFAB offers CMOS and SOI-based silicon technologies from 1.0 down to 0.13 micrometer node. We extend our offer with a broad portfolio of MEMS and wide band gap processing capabilities. XFAB Texas has a long site history, ranging back to 1978, starting as a 3-inch fab for DRAM production for Texas Instruments. TI added several expansions to the fab and converted it to a modern 6-inch memory manufacturing site with a capacity of around 6, uh, 26k wafer starts per month. But eventually they moved to larger wafer sites and other fabs and XFAB acquired the site in 1999 to process silicon-based CMOS wafers for its customers. The silicon carbide engagement began in 2013 with the idea to process silicon carbide wafers on the same line as the silicon wafers. Pretty soon it was clear that a mere conversion of tools would not be sufficient, so we have quite a long history of adding new, dedicated silicon carbide equipment to the fab, most of them 8-inch capable. Today XFAB is worldwide the largest silicon carbide pure play foundry. We are ramping our silicon carbide volumes constantly and we could basically dedicate the whole fab capacity to silicon carbide. We have added all the necessary equipment to manufacture world-class diodes, JFETs and MOSFETs, recently adding an internal epi reactor for high quality SIG wafers. Not sure who of you is familiar with the foundry business model, where usually traditional silicon foundries develop open platform technologies for processing wafers. They offer their service to customers that can bring in their IC design, usually using a so-called PDK, a process development kit, a known software like Cadence or Mentor. The foundry is responsible for developing the process and manufacture the wafer, a highly scalable business model. Some partners, however, would like to implement not only their own design, but also their own process IP and use the foundry as a pure manufacturing site, the so-called copy exact approach. In the early years of silicon carbide manufacturing, this was the business model for XFAB as well. But with every customer and our own R&D learning cycles, similar best practice processes for the same devices crystallized and we decided to develop a unit processes for common process steps, so-called standard process blocks. So today, even less experienced customers can start a silicon carbide process development by bringing their process architecture, design and specific implant schedule. Alternatively, alternatively, customers can buy silicon carbide design or process IP from our partners. Let me explain you a bit more about our standard process block approach in the next slide. A standard process block is a set of process steps for a specific part of the process flow that will summarize all necessary steps for one layer within the process flow, for example the gate formation or the ohmic context. It contains First, block routing specifications and routing spec values, meaning a description of the necessary process steps in sequence, named routing, that define the equivalent process steps, for example the gate formation. Second, block device specifications that define the result of the process. Third, control structures and methods for inline and offline quality control steps that are part of the control plan, which is also an element of the standard process block. So the customer comes to XFAB and requests a process with a characteristic flow. XFAB has installed a so-called onboarding team that will check the requirements and match them to already developed standard process blocks. We provide to the customer a process installation kit that contains all necessary information so that a tape-in can be made. The onboarding team then discusses with the customer a process flow proposal based on XFAB standards process blocks. In some cases, a new block needs to be developed or some blocks require adjustment. 
especially in the implant schedule, it is very critical for the device characteristics and is owned by every customer. The onboarding team will help then to implement the customer own process as in copy exact into the process flow. In a few cases, also adding of a new equipment might be necessary. So standard process blocks help customers to have set up a process faster that fits best to the foundry equipment capabilities. Let me tell you a little bit about the challenges of processing silicon carbide. You might think that the processing of silicon carbide wafers is as easy as silicon wafers, but quite the opposite is true. XFAP engineers faced some major challenges before we have been able to process SIG wafers on a similar yield like silicon wafers. So first of all, silicon carbide is transparent and quite brittle. So there have been made many adjustments to the equipment to be able to hand, handle, mark and measure silicon carbide wafers. The second challenge is the wafer geometry. Thick wafers have a huge bow and roughness compared to silicon wafers, but are only half as thick. So imagine you, tries to play, you try to place a bowl on a flat tray and do some lithography with the same focus steps over the whole wafer. You will fail. I mean, if you manage to suck the wafer to the chuck before it is. The third challenge lies in the physical differences between the silicon carbide and silicon lattice. In silicon, you implant the dopant on the surface and through the fusion, the, the doping layer is created. This will not work for silicon carbide. Here, practically, no diffusion takes place. The dopant stays where they have been implanted. The implant needs to be heated to achieve the required sheet resistance. And you need multiple chained implants to create a doping profile. That is why the implant schedule is so crucial for the device characteristics. You basically need to shoot the atoms with the right angle, energy, dose and temperature into the place where they need to be. So here lies a lot of knowledge, as you can imagine. With the implant at such aggressive conditions, you are basically creating a moon surface on the wafer. So for later processing, the surface needs to be healed with a high temperature annealed process that will create a carbonized surface on the wafer as you can see in the picture below. And with high temperature, I mean really high, silicon and other materials would simply melt at this temperature. As you know, we are talking about power devices, and this means a high current density with means of very thick metals at the surface. On the other hand, devices in the 600 volt up to 1700 volt need the wafer to be thin. The thinner, the better for the RDS on. So the stress handling of the silicon carbide wafers becomes a huge issue. And last but not least, there are the challenges in the device design. There is simply no perfect design, but just a carefully balanced trade-offs between, for example, the blocking voltage and the RDS on. So to summarize it, to process silicon carbide wafers in a silicon foundry is quite a challenge, but one that we managed. And here I'm not even referring to business challenges like lower throughput at most tools or higher wafer and substrate prices. But on the bright side, we have, of course, the benefits to work with the foundry on the manufacturing of your own devices. First of all, you will get exactly the device that will suit your needs and meet the requirements of your customers. You have the opportunity to create the best silicon MOSFET or the most efficient power module the world has ever seen. And by working with XFAB, you can have it faster. You will have the opportunity to use our world-class processes to quote here an unstated customer. In the end, we make it easy to start working with this new material and you can benefit from the economies of scale from a foundry, allowing for lower cost per die. And together with our customers and partners, XFAP has demonstrated first class silicon carbide devices, up to 10k breakdown voltage, very low RDS on figures or the highest current ratings in the industry. Our toolset, processing capabilities and design rules allow in the first generation to create, for example, MOSFETs with a cell pitch range from 5 to about 9 micrometer and specific RDS on down to 3 milliohm times square centimeter. The next generation, which will require further tool expansion, will trace down the road to the theoretical limit and allow cell pitches down to 3 micrometer or specific RDS on down to 2 milliohm. The specific figures of merit of each device will depend on the individual design and can be adapted to your needs. What we see in the end are very competitive silicon carbide devices. If you compare it to either datasheet information from available SIG MOSFETs or values from 
reverse engineering, you can see that our customers are manufacturing very competitive devices already today in planar device architecture. On the last page, I want to give you a short glimpse of the silicon carbide roadmap from XFAB. As I already mentioned, we are working on the second and third processing generation as well as on the trench technology. We will see further improvements in the epi epitaxy as well as adding further capacity here. In parallel, we are developing constantly new standard process blocks. And this year, we added uh, the highly requested backside thinning capability down to 110 micrometer, as well as a cinderable metal on the front, in this case gold. If you want to know more details, I invite you to a deeper discussions after the signing of an NDA. I'm finished with my presentation. I hope you enjoyed a quick dive into SIG processing. If you should have any further questions, please feel free to contact me directly.